Fall Event 2023 in Forge of Empires. The fall event has always been about creating delicious pastries from various ingredients such as apples, caramel, pumpkin or cinnamon. That has been changed. For 2023 the wildlife event has been modified and used as a fall event. Ahead this info. The minigame has been simplified a bit, so that everyone will get the main prize at maximum expansion level. The main prize is really good and successful participation in this event will bring additional benefits in the game for a long time to come. This event has it all. The first thing to do in the fall event 2023 is to collect sacks of flour. With these you can then get special advantages in the minigame. To be able to start the minigame wooden spoons are required. If you still remember the wildlife event it will help to know that the wooden spoons correspond to the wildlife tickets and the sacks of flour have the same function as the wildlife coins in spring. The event starts with 200 sacks of flour and 4 wooden spoons. For logging in each day you get another 15 sacks of flour. In this event the main quest line is divided into two parts of 15 tasks each. This means that two tasks are offered at a time. They alternately deliver either 10 sacks of flour or a wooden spoon as a reward. Once you have completed all the immediate quests you can then tackle the daily quests. One of which is unlocked every day even if it still has to wait in the background until the immediate quests are completed. For completing these 21 daily quests in total you get 15 sacks of flour and a wooden spoon each. As always the quests are in the first pinned comment below the video. The daily challenges are also important in this event. Here you can win sacks of flour, a wooden spoon or with a very small chance a golden spoon every day. The incidents in and around the city can occasionally provide either sacks of flour or wooden spoons. A wooden spoon can then be used to start the minigame. In it you can see 8 times 11 treats. If you click on a group of 2, 3 or 4 neighboring treats of the same color, they are removed from the game and all the treats above them slide down accordingly. Clicking on a treat in a larger continuous group of the same color replaces that treat with a jar and all remaining treats in that group are removed from the game. This jar then contains a price which is more interesting the larger the group of treats was which is marked with up to 6 stars in the jar. However you get prices only when they fall out of the playing field into the bowls at the bottom. So it's a matter of purposefully removing such groups of treats from the game that the prizes, it as jars and coffee cups, move purposefully downwards and can then be appropriated. The jars have five different colors that provide different rewards. Purple jars provide forge points. Green jars provide production aids. Orange jars provide medals or blueprints, red jars provide military units or battle boosts and white jars provide goods or fragment of a wishing well. Jars also provide a chance to get the respective daily special. The order of the daily specials changes from the beta server based on experience but the selection remains mostly the same. The daily specials include many upgrade kits for main prizes from previous years. This way you can upgrade event buildings to the highest level that may still be incomplete. 
If you don't like the daily special on a given day, you can replace it with an alternative daily special. In addition to the generated jars, there are also coffee cups. These should be the main focus, because they bring us closer to the main price of the event step by step or cup by cup. However, it is sometimes very difficult to achieve this. That's why there are three different tools. At the beginning, you already get tools of which, after the tutorial, then four forks, two spatulas and a rolling pin remain. The fork specifically takes a single treat out of the game. It is the tool of choice when only a little is missing to make the price tumble down. The effect of the fork is very manageable and it will be very popular. The spatula takes a whole row out of the game and the rolling pin removes the whole column. The tools can be purchased individually or as a more attractively priced set. This is a main use for the previously collected sacks of flour. With the collected sacks of flour you can also extend a game. Basically I warn against hanging on to a game for too long. Only extend if it is very concretely foreseeable that coffee cups will surely fall afterwards. It is important to understand that you should do the mini game every day to always keep the number of wooden spoons low. Only if you have less than four wooden spoons, the game will generate a new wooden spoon every eight hours. That's more wooden spoons in total than all the wooden spoons obtained in any other way. Then there is the golden spoon. You get three of them from quest series milestones. When you activate a golden spoon, you can play against time for five minutes. In these five minutes, you can start as many mini games as you want without using up any wooden spoons. This can give you quite significant progress. The first grand prize is the Autumn Vineyard Level 1. You can clear this grand prize right at the beginning of the event for free. For every 20 coffee cups there is another grand prize. Every second grand prize is an upgrade kit for the Autumn Vineyard which can be upgraded to level 9 with a total of 8 upgrade kits. Since there is an upgrade kit for completing the event quest series, you will need another 7 upgrade kits from grand prizes. This will require 280 coffee cups. A little guide to see if you are doing well. You should get an average of at least 3 coffee cups out of each wooden spoon to end up with the main prize at the highest level. Always remember to collect the grand prizes, otherwise they would be lost at the end of the event. This year's grand prize is the aforementioned Autumn Vineyard, an event building with a 3x7 footprint. Upgraded to level 9, it then provides population happiness, daily coins and supplies. When motivated, the Autumn Vineyard also provides 70 goods of the current age, 17 to 21 forge points, 3 blueprints of the current or a higher age and a fragment for one of two small additional event buildings. Also, it delivers permanent attack boosts for the attacking and the defending army. In addition, 5 of 150 fragments for a silver upgrade kit are produced daily. This silver upgrade kit can then be used to upgrade the Autumn Vineyard to a rustic Autumn Vineyard. This improves all the values of the building and instead of the fragments of the rustic upgrade kit, 5 of 150 fragments of the vibrant upgrade kit are then produced. With this, the event building can then be upgraded again. At this highest level, the values are then better again and the production of the upgrade fragments is omitted. 
In short, it is realistic to get the event building to level 9 and then upgrade it to a rustic autumn vineyard a month later and finally upgrade it to the highest level another month later. At that point, the building is a real stunner. It is a must for every player. Now, I had mentioned the fragments for two other small event buildings that the main prize provides daily. The first is the one times one small shroom throne with bonuses for the attacking army, daily goods and three fragments for jumping pumpkin. The two times two small jumping pumpkin in turn needs population like a production building and reduces the happiness of the population. Those who already have many event buildings in their city should be more than amply equipped with population and happiness. New players should wait a bit with the construction of the building if necessary. It doesn't run away. The building is so interesting because of up to 13% attack bonus of the attacking army, up to 10% attack bonus of the defending army and up to 16% defense of the defending army. In addition, the jumping pumpkin acts as a production building for supplies. This can then be used to fulfill production quests of future events well. The second small event building mentioned earlier is Granny Aurora's Apple Tree. It produces one or two forge points daily, provides 2 to 4% attack bonus to the defending army and 2 to 4% defense bonus to the defending army. To the defending army. If the building is motivated, it provides 3 of 100 fragments daily for Cider Garden. The 2 times 2 small cider garden produces 3 to 5 forge points daily plus, when motivated, either 5 units of the current age or 1 unit of the next higher age and provides a permanent bonus to attack and defense for the attacking army and an attack bonus for the defending army. This variety of buildings and upgrades may be a bit irritating at first. But the fact is, with the main price you get endless fragments for further buildings. So on average you build Aurora's Apple Tree and Mushroom Throne every 6 months. Each of Aurora's Apple Trees in turn allows you to build an apple vineyard every month and each shroom's throne allows you to build another jumping pumpkin every month. Limit is only the space in your city and it requires some patience of course. Gigantic! So you do not only have a top event building once, but you get more and more in the field. Therefore no one should miss this event.